A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Agrippa and Bernice arrived in Caesarea on a visit to Festus. Since they had spent several days there, Festus referred Paul's case to the king, saying, There is a man here left in custody by Felix. When I was in Jerusalem, the chief priests and the elders of the Jews brought charges against him and demanded his condemnation. I answered them that it was not Roman practice to hand over an accused person before he has faced his accusers and had the opportunity to defend himself against their charge. So when they came together here, I made no delay. The next day, I took my seat on the tribunal and ordered the man to be brought in. His accusers stood around him, but did not charge him with any of the crimes I suspected. Instead, they had some issues with him about their own religion and about a certain Jesus who had died, but who Paul claimed was alive. Since I was at a loss how to investigate this controversy, I asked if he were willing to go to Jerusalem and there stand trial on these charges. And when Paul appealed that he be held in custody for the emperor's decision, I ordered him held until I could send him to Caesar. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial is, The Lord has established his throne in heaven. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he put our transgressions from us. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, all you in angels, his angels, you mighty in strength, who do his bidding. The Lord has established his throne in heaven. The week is over, and what a beautiful week it has been. Once again, the Gospel is John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and remain in his love. I've told you this so that my joy might be in you, and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends <clears throat> if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I heard from my Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear much fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we are coming to the end of the Easter season. Jesus is very definitive in what he happens to be saying, very definitive and in a way, very commanding. He's saying here, love one another as I have loved you. Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. These are absolute statements about the power of Christ in our lives. This is meant to be the culmination of the Easter season in terms of what Christ does for us and of what we must do for one another. That my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. I've given my sermon on this gospel more times than I can remember, and I know exactly what it's all about. Joy is not a joke, it's not a funny story, it's a point of view. It's a way of getting up in the morning and having joy in your heart. It's a way of proceeding in the world and of enjoying the world, that my joy might be yours and your joy complete. Complete joy means that we always see not only the glasses half full, but overflowing. We see possibilities every day of, of growing in love of those we care for and of the stranger as well. We see possibilities in our lives of greatness in, in terms of having a giving and a forgiving heart 
And the list goes on and on and on. To be a person of joy is not to wait until Christmas comes to see it on the front of a card, but to etch it on our hearts and to live it in a way that brings that joy to other people. God has given us all we need. We are the receptacles of great and wonderful truths and, and, and gifts. And, and they are to be given all year long. And they make life joyous for us, for those we love, for perhaps people we have yet even to meet in our lives. Go into the world, my friends. Be joyous. Be life givers. It's been a great week. Weather's beautiful. Spring is kind of drifting into summer. Isn't that grand? And remember still, it's the month of Mary, the month of May. So say a prayer to the Blessed Mother and have a beautiful day. And I'll see you next Monday. Take care, my friends. God bless. And now, my friends, as we have shared the word of God together, I invite you to spend time with me in front of the Blessed Sacrament as we share our spiritual prayer of communion. My friends, we now invite you to spend some time in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament in the Tabernacle. We usually uh, follow up my reflections and my, um, my gospel reflections with this time. And uh, so often I will say to you, uh, pray and reflect on a psalm or on some of the words of the gospel, something Jesus says or a parable. This is a great time to do that. And so join me now as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And my friends, as you spend time before the Lord, may he bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy these moments of private prayer and reflection. <laughs>